Nobody saw those movies, right? Because nobody says, honey, let's look through the TV guide thing and see if there's any wonderful things about racism or any things about diversity. I, I really, yeah. you know what I like at the end of the day? There's a really great diversity humor, right? There isn't any. <laughs> I mean, if you, if you feel this about L.A., I ask this to all of my L.A. friends, which is why I'm asking you. I mean, most have left already, but do, do you, what's going to come of this place? Well, it's dead. I mean, for example, I started looking in New York many years ago, 40 years ago. They started putting up the, the uh, I saw it first in Chicago. They started putting up the nicknames of the streets on the street signs. I grew up in Chicago, State Street, State Street. All of a sudden, it's State Street, that great street. Mm -hmm. Go to New York, Broadway, 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 the great white way. Well, when they start putting up the nicknames on the street sign, what you're saying is, guess what used to be here, right? Something that it ain't. Something that's not there anymore. Yeah. So in uh, Martha's Vineyard and Cape Cod and Nantucket, when I was a kid, I had friends in the East who were, uh, and their parents were professionals, they were doctors, lawyers, Indian chiefs, blah, blah, blah. And they had a place that they rented on those outliers, right? And they start, I started making a little bit of money in, in my 20s, and my friends said, why don't you buy a place over there? You know, on the ocean, there's nothing between you and Portugal, it's going for nothing. So I say, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no. So now those places are selling for 50 and 100 million dollars. But you're not gonna find anybody who makes harpoons mm -hmm. on Martha's Vineyard, which used to be a, a whaling port, it's gone, right? Yeah, so yeah. That, that Soho and, and, and Chelsea, where I used to live, was where the ship's chandlers lived when the, New York was originally one of the great seaports of the world, right? And when I was a kid working there, it was the, it was the capital of the world. But, uh, but you can't be the cultural capital of the world without artists. Right. And the reason that the cities existed was you took disparate elements, which would never, ever meet in life. For example, uh, in Chicago, this woman wrote a book about 20 years ago called Terrible Honesty about Harlem in, in the 20s. She said, you have these three groups that are completely scorned and they have their own wonderful cultures, black America, gay America and Jewish America. Right. But they all met in Harlem and they met in Broadway and they cross pollinated each other. It was incredible energy. But now we're completely separate in the city. I mean, I say I go into my neighborhood restaurant in uh, Santa Monica. I said that the definition of diversity is someone who has 10.1 percent body fat. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, fact, they destroyed Santa Monica, the, the promenade, well, the whole thing. They destroyed it. Yeah, no, it's uh, you know, the, you know, the diversity is somebody uh, who hasn't had Botox. Yeah. So there's no cross pollination, cross pollinization anymore. And what happened to free speech is the Democrats and Republicans don't even speak to each other anymore. Those who used to meet at the synagogue, at the church, right, at their kids' baseball game, uh, I got a friend. She's a, she's a black woman and a white guy across the street met her at a baseball game and she was talking to her kids or black kids about something or other. And he said, excuse me, you shouldn't, the white guy says to her, excuse me, you shouldn't talk to your kids that way about racism. That's it. <laughs> she's, saying, she's saying to her kids, Race, there is no, he said, racism is all gone. Get out there and play, big deal. And he's saying, <laughs> That's white woke 101 right there. So, so, so what do you think Hollywood can produce? I mean, do you see anything sort of new and inspirational coming out of that machine? We're, we're shooting, we're taping this right now just a couple days after the Oscars, which I realized that I didn't even know the Oscars were on. Of course, I found out because of the slap heard around the world. Uh, but then when I went through the best movie list and I went through a bunch of the other lists, I did it live on the show. I think I had seen one of the films you know, I flip through Netflix and Hulu and it's very hard to find something that feels new or original or yeah. or inspirational that the machinery, because of the reasons you're talking about, 
the Hollywood machinery seems unable to give us, or maybe can occasionally choke out something new and fresh, but there just doesn't seem to be anything left. Well, there isn't. I mean, nobody saw those movies, right? Because nobody says, honey, let's look through the TV guide thing and see if there's any wonderful things about racism or any things about diversity. I, I really, yeah. you know what I like at the end of the day? There's a really great diversity humor, right? There isn't any. I like to be lectured by uh, late night comedians about how I'm racist right before I go to bed. That's my thing. Yeah, me too. <laughs> It's, it's terrific. So the question is who's watching? And see, when you got a theater, you know who's watching because if they go to sleep or they leave in the middle of the first act, you better change your mind pretty quick. But when you own the high ground, there's no connection with the audience. Mm -hmm. They say, oh, you know what? If you want to see the Weather Channel, you're going to have to buy this whole package and we'll sell you whatever crap we want. So yet again... Uh, it's not that the inmates have taken over the asylum, but that they've been kicked out of of the direction of the asylum. Because because the 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 inmates of the asylum were the artists. Right when you kick the artists out, say I get it, I know what, how to use the theater, I know how to use film. I'll tell people what life is like. That black people are people too. Everyone's people too, except the Jews. And that sick people are sick, and what they they deserve our. Uh, you know, there used to be all these plays in New York about sick people, people who are blind, people who are deaf, blah, blah, blah. They always won the Pulitzer Prize, you know, for telling us that the bad guy, doesn't the bad guy realize that a blind person is a person too? So you come in humming the play, uh -huh. but nobody likes that play except the Pulitzer Prize Committee. What about sort of the Disneyfication of the theater that, you know, in the heyday of the theater, it was all, it's everything you're talking about. It was these incredible independent writers and playwrights who could come up with original stories. And now basically everything is a redux of a Disney movie, either from 50 years ago or sometimes from three months ago. Yeah, well, when I was a kid uh, in New York, the theater district was a slum. It was dangerous. It was uh, sex trafficking and confidence men and mugging and massage parlors and whorehouses and pool halls where you could buy anything in the world and great theater. But as the 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 theater brought people to look at the the cause of decay is always growth, right? When the growth stops at some point it always has to stop. Decay takes takes over to as you know as the yogis would say to repurpose it for the next thing. Okay, so the the theater district, especially on Forty Second Street, is all when the, when the middle class left New York, the theater still existed, but the middle class couldn't afford to live there. So the theater, because it was a money maker, appealed to tourists. That's who goes to the theater; mm -hmm. it's all tourists. So you can't appeal to the tourists with a new play by a new guy mm -hmm. who nobody, nobody ever heard of on a subject that you can't r reduce to a tagline, no one's gonna do that because you know, it costs whatever it costs, five million bucks to stage a play. So because, so the artists aren't coming to New York, to, who wants to go do that play? You know, anybody can write that play. And I was looking at, it was a, a really, they used to have ads on TV, I wish you watch TV years ago. They said, not actors, real life people, right? The people in this commercial are not actors, they are real life people. I realized if you turn it around, what you say is, yeah, I get it. it, look good to me. Oh, you don't need to be an actor, right? So you don't need to be an actor if there's no scripts. Because anybody can say, you know, I'm kind of like, I don't know, I kind of like look around and I kind of say, you know, anybody can do that. Anybody can write that garbage. Where the artists gonna grow? They aren't gonna grow in the, in the cities. We can't afford to live there, mm -hmm. right? and no one's gonna put on their stuff, so something else will happen. If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about politics instead of nonstop yelling, check out our politics playlist. And if you wanna watch full interviews on a variety of topics, watch our full episode playlist all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.